Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the round table at India Fashion Forum 2015. We will focus on online retail, a disruptive uh, a disruptor of retail or a facilitator of consumption. That is what our experts will focus on. In this age of constant change in the retail sector, where brick and mortar and digital are in a constant state of flux, are we ready to seize the huge opportunities offered by a consumer who is looking for new and innovative ways of being delighted? Are we leveraging the power of technology to create new ways in which to engage with the, cons uh, with the consumer? And at what point, if any, will we strike a balance between online retail and brick and mortar? Welcome to our experts who will discuss all this and more over the next hour or so. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together. Welcome our moderator, Abhishek Ganguly, Managing Director, Puma. Please welcome Mr. Raghib Hussain, Vice President, ESOFT. Could you uh, please raise your hand so that everybody... Thank you. Mrs. Darman Kapoor, Magic Director, Capsons. LZ Van Vinendal, Global Alliances Head, Suitsupply.com from the Netherlands. Hethel Kodak, Brand Director, Color Plus and Park Avenue. Kiran Komatla, Head of IT, CEO of Future Fashion. Manoj Gupta, Co-Founder of Craftsvilla.com. He'll be joining us hopefully in a short while. Uh, please also welcome Nitin Babankole, Director for e-commerce and online at Google. He's just finished his presentation at the main conference area, so he will join us the moment he can get free from his uh, numerous fans who he has uh, uh, gained over the last hour or so. Please welcome Mr. Pratik Sinha, client partner, e-commerce travel and locals and classifieds, Facebook. A warm welcome to Rishi Agarwal, head of strategic alliances, fashion at snapdeal.com. Please welcome Mr. Samajit Singh, founder and managing director, Iksula. A warm welcome to Swaramdeep Singh, managing director, Logic ERP Solutions. And of course, our lead presentation will be made by Rajna Nath, the retail and consumer lead and partner, BWC. Please welcome Rajna Nath, who will make our first presentation. And immediately thereafter, Abhishek Ganguly, our moderator, will take over. Rajna, over to you. A very good afternoon to all of you and thanks for having me out here. It's indeed, I just went around this place and it's awesome. And as a woman, I was just wondering if I could buy certain things that I'm not allowed to. So I think I'll have to go back to the shops now. I just wanted to stay, by, stay with this particular slide, you know, for some time to start off with. Online retail, a disruptor of retail or a facilitator of consumption? Now, I don't know. I mean, I at least talk uh, on this particular topic at least three to four times a year and I've been doing that for two to three years almost and I've come to a conclusion that why are we even talking about this at the moment you know because it is all about customer probably are we looking inside out and saying that you know do I need to be in a physical format or do I need to be on an online format or do I need to look at the customer and say that this is what my customer want and hence that's my strategy you know that is what uh, it should go to so very early on in this year we released a report uh, we do it every year it is the multi-channel report where this year we spoke to around 20,000 people across the globe, asking them questions like how they are buying online, offline, what are they buying on store, what are they buying off store, what do they want their retailers to do more. And there are a few things which, uh, you know, I think we uh, reached a conclusion, conclusion on was that the online and the offline world has reached a tipping point, frankly. I, you know, if you look at the data and you look at uh, the Aditya Birla group wanting to get into e-commerce, they are actually looking at uh, digital to be able to give them a new business model. They are looking at uh, you know digital to give them a disruptor which will actually you know help them uh, get into new businesses out here. So I think the acceptance of uh, you know uh, uh, physical format versus uh, uh, e-tail format is more like there's no versus today. It has to be both. The second is online retail industry has been uh, has seen big ticket investment. We've been on top of this, and you know we have uh, Snapdeal on the panel as well. And uh, you know they are the talk of the season, and I was telling you that. And uh, I already talked about it. Tata, uh, Billa getting into this kind of a business. You know companies coming to us and telling us you know help us. And these are manufacturing companies. These are service companies who are coming to us and saying that help us, you know, build a business model on digital. So, you know, uh, let me help, you know, help me create that disruption. And uh, 
If how many of you have actually bought on e-commerce? Anything on e-commerce? I have. Uh, how many of you seen like no reason sales? How many of you bought things that you never needed? Right. So I think this very much answers the question: Are we eating out of the same pie, or are we actually, you know, getting the pie, you know, much much bigger out here? And uh, aggressive customer acquisition, uh, you know, strategies out here. So I was talking to one of the apparel brand uh, MD the other day, and uh, somebody asked him a question as to, you know, he actually gives a shirt which costs around, uh, you know, 1200 bucks at 900 bucks, how does he survive? And he says that, look, if I was in a physical format and I had to acquire a customer, I would be spending typically 500 to 600 bucks just acquiring a customer. Out here, I'm giving you a discount which is just 300 bucks and I've acquired a customer uh, you know, out there who I know will come back to me. And nobody in this game is actually thinking of making money today. So if you're actually accus accusing them of you know discounting, forget about it, they're not even bothered about it. So the wave of disruption, like we said, it's the price was there and it's there to stay. So, you know, uh, that's the platform that the retailers are working on and it's going to stay out here. Exclusivity in product. I mean, if you look at the Microsoft, you know, launching on Amazon, you look at all the foreign brands saying that I will not go into a physical retail. I will, you know, actually talk to the retailers and uh, launch my brand out there. Or you look at, you know, Let's say uh, the eateries. You talk about the uh, your Microsoft. Uh, sorry, uh, the McDonald's cafe today. The Mac cafe out there. They are actually investing in real estate and creating a value, more value for you as you go and eat in a cafe out there. So there's exclusivity. Greater convenience for shopper. Go and talk to anyone. If you're going home, you know Mumbai. I don't know how many of you actually travel between a Gurgaon and a Noida. If you come from NCR, or how many of you actually travel in Mumbai. You are always at your mobile and if you are on the mobile, you are on a site either reading news or you are at a site actually buying something. So I think you know it's all about convenience. Mobile and related technologies, uh, Mindra was in the news a few months back saying that they are going to uh, you know, sort of close down their site and 80% of their sale is actually happening on mobile today. So they are actually trying to see how do they drive 20% of their consumers who are buying, uh, you know, uh, let's say on a laptop to a mobile. So the innovation is actually happening in mobile and in PwC we always believe that India will bypass the laptop revolution. The revolution will happen in mobile and that's exactly what is happening. And the evolving nature of physical stores. Now if you look at the physical stores, typically, I don't know how many, I mean even a snap deal will come back and tell you that tomorrow we are also talking about getting physical stores where I as a consumer can actually walk in, try on a few things, for, uh, you know, but order online and exit the shop out there. So I think the physical store itself is reinventing. Fashion retail after electronic, the largest segment uh, online. And uh, you know, private labels are getting big and I, we are looking at a time when these sites actually become the designers of the future. Uh, it's getting more and more difficult to distinguish a sale from the other, frankly. So the only distinguishing factor out here and I think the biggest reason why the Flipkart and the Mindra deal happened is because they needed depth out there. And uh, you needed to make that uh, you know, dif uh, differentiation but there is very little differentiation in sale today other than you know what categories you are actually uh, ordering. And the consumer is totally fickle minded. Believe me, if they're not getting something at a physical store or the e-commerce store, they just switch loyalties. We, you know, it doesn't matter whether they're on e-commerce, they're on the physical store, I just need my stuff. And if, uh, we actually asked a question to our people and they, which actually more or less answers uh, the topic out here is, what do you wish Indian retailers would do to make you not just research a browse but buy products as well? I think what they said is the first one is very very important. They said provide the same range of products across all channels. So if you're thinking you can survive just by being an e-commerce player or being a physical format, that's not happening because your consumer is looking for the same stuff across channels. And, and if there was anything that you know uh, needed to answer this question, data shows it all. We use Canadian data a lot. And if you typically look at it, this particular data actually, you know, sort of again answers the question that we've been trying to answer. And that's the pie is actually expanding. When you're going, you know, I was talking to the MD of Zobi.com the other day. And we asked him, you know, how many cities are you in? And he said, I'm at 7,300 pin codes and it's just taken me a year to get there. And look, 
talk about all the people coming from Varanasi to you know uh, Kanpur to any you know tier three, tier four cities. They are as aspirational as people uh, you know living in these metro cities. And today, if they are buying X, they've actually made it X plus Delta out there because since they're aspirational, they're buying more and more. So for me, as far as I'm concerned, my experience, my discussion with the others and data you know from analysts like Canadian that we have out here. This buy is positively expanding. It's a question of who gets there first. So thanks. Uh, that's what I had to say. Thank you. And if you want to, you know, connect with me, this is my idea. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Ashna. My name is Abhishek Ganguly, and I head uh, Puma in India. So sometime back when we were discussing about round tables at IFF uh, between Amitabh and his team. Um, and we were discussing what are the relevant topics to have discussed in a forum like this. I obviously uh, chose my way, way through to probably what I thought is the most relevant and the most hot topic uh, to discuss. Um, and we know this that the last two, three years, as a, you know, and I have been on the brand side, how consumer pattern, buying pattern has changed and I have seen the pulse. We have been in this country for the last 8 years, now become the number one sports brand in India uh, in 2014, by end of 2014, probably the only country, strategic country globally where Puma is number one. It has actually coincided uh, with the online commerce revolution where we also coincidentally are the largest brand on a Mintra or a, you know, on, a, on the soft line, on a Flipkart and an Amazon. Probably also on Snapdeal, I'm, I'm not very sure. So uh, I have definitely, uh, this topic is from a business perspective very, very relevant. The reason I say very relevant is for a brand like Puma, we also have 340 uh, offline stores which are of very, very strategic importance to a brand like ours because we have grown the brand with an experience in this country. And that experience we believe has come through our physical stores. So very relevant topic and I think I am very humbled to see a very um, uh, very uh, esteemed uh, panel here to discuss this all in their own rights, uh, 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 have the experience to talk about it. I think there are brand people here uh, uh, and there are also uh, retailers here offline, online as well as we have service people here who whether on the technology side or on the marketing side or uh, you know there are people who are on the service side of this uh, digital commerce uh, piece. So I would like to throw this open to, to everyone. I would not like to hold this discussion like going one, one, one by one, but to have a very, very open dialogue if we discuss, uh, um, you know, uh, written by you and all. Uh, so the first thing that we would like to start off this with is that last two, three years, we have seen a very big shift this is definitely, whether you call it disruption, you call it the paradigm shift, but it has happened. But in each of our businesses, how have you seen the last two, three years change the way consumers have bought, whether fashion or on the retail side? Uh, as uh, not told us, say like uh, the pie is increasing. Why this pie is increasing? Say the pie is increasing because of uh, the internet. Internet is available in say like somewhere in the villages also. Because in the coming uh, years, yes, the every village will be going on the 4G also, right? And uh, moreover, say this, uh, we talk about this online as offline. This is actually properly facilitated. It gives the proper information to the consumer. Right, so that he can research it, and as he research it, it's become the impulsive buyer, and the buying is uh, growing. That's what I understand. So, uh, uh, hi guys. Uh, I guess both are going to coexist. Uh, there's no dispute on that. Online has brought an accessibility, and I was talking about my own case uh, where my kids' shoes I was looking for, and I couldn't get the shoes in uh, proper a million square feet mall. Also, I couldn't find the football shoes that I wanted for him. Rather, there were no options, and you just go onto an online portal, and you said at least 40 options, 50 options available. So it's definitely a channel of accessibility. 
today, uh, if I look at my friends, uh, for Color Plus, for example, we did not uh, look at e-commerce as an active player uh, in the early part of the journey. And uh, we are now looking at exclusive launches. So there are product launches of very premium products and not price sensitive products. So we are trying to counter the typical view that, you know, e-commerce is uh, maybe more for price. But we are looking at that as an exclusive launch platform for a product which is first time in India, practically speaking. And that would happen sometime in April, beyond which I cannot tell you things. But uh, that's that's the flavor. So I think these are both going to coexist and uh, it's an opportunity to use the channels uh, in a different way. Uh, somewhere only thing that I put forward to uh, people from uh, my colleague here from Snapdeal or other e-commerce players is can the experience of accessing the products for a customer change? It's it's too formatted and too uniform and looks the same. Uh, you, you change portals, you would still feel the same. So maybe a distinctness which can help the brand uh, create its attitude in the digital space uh, is somewhere, uh, it, 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 it's something which is open. So no, here the, my, my specific question to you in that would be in the last two, three years, are there some remarkable trends that you have seen in your business which is, is a complete shift. The trend, I guess, you know, pressure brings out the best in people is uh, a broader premise I operate on. And uh, if I look at, uh, this did bring the pressure onto the businesses because as I said, my business was slow on the e-commerce platform, getting onto that bandwagon. It created pressure, but somewhere colorless being a brand, uh, uh, which is very customer oriented, not that it's too loosely used, but yeah, there's a high loyal base which colorless has and it enjoys extreme loyalty. That worked to our advantage even during this time. So the kind of numbers I was hearing uh, in last uh, three, four months where uh, it has been a tough period. I have uh, not had similar issues on the brand color plus because the business uh, was far more consistent and uh, the average men shopper, let's say, might be spending like 20 odd minutes in a store. Uh, in case of color plus, we get customers who happily spend 45 to 50 minutes. And those things and leading to the experience per square feet is the phenomena that we try to focus on. So not just revenue per square feet, experience per square feet. And we get consumer stories which I am always proud of and whenever I talk I end up getting some goose pimples. But those are consumer stories which we proudly believe in and we get maybe a page long email, two page long email which is not about complaint, which is not about getting uh, some special deal or some discount. It's just pure customer pouring into the brand as if it's his own. His own. So that's that's the critical thing. But no specific examples to specific uh, say to you. I think uh, Abhishek, uh, I, I'm just going to give an example. Being, uh, I'm also representing a brand like Color Plus. Uh, the challenge is for us, being a niche brand in India, uh, we have only 41 outlets and uh, reaching to customer is a big challenge. And opening stores is completely depending on the real estates. So we have so many dependents. We plan to open 10 stores and we end up opening 2 stores because the real estate is not on to that moment. So uh, once uh, we started the journey of e-com, once we started to uh, come into uh, marketplaces, uh, it, it really gave us a, a good uh, branding and uh, we are able to reach to uh, distant customers uh, who uh, cannot, a customer who is in Guwahati, I can't open a store in Guwahati for next two years. But the customer from there are buying on marketplaces and we are able to sell more and it is contributing a good uh, decent percentage of uh, my overall sale. So we are very much convenient uh, to expand our business on marketplaces and try to reach to uh, a customer at tier 2, tier 3, tier 4 cities where we can, we cannot even uh, imagine that we will be going there in next 2-3 years. As Rachna said, uh, the uh, aspirational customers is not based only on metros or uh, somewhere. We, we have a live examples like a customer who is buying on a marketplace, writing back to us on a Facebook saying that look I have bought, uh, bought this particular jacket on uh, Mintra or Snapdeal and uh, we are looking forward for the next collection. So it's really uh, good that we are reaching to a good amount of customers. And it, it, it certainly helps uh, for us to easily achieve our target. Sure. I'll uh, just add to what both of them have just said. Uh, Facebook has had the opportunity of having worked with quite a few brands like these over the last couple of years. And if I were to talk about the trends over the last two to three years that you've just talked about, I, see, I think three significant things have happened. First, digital has become a significant distribution and discovery channel. 
Okay. Today, whether it is uh, influencing what you buy, whether you buy it online, offline, whatever, digital and peer recommendation has a strong role to play in that. Second, as we've been uh, speaking uh, right from when Rajna was presenting the slides, mobile is assuming center stage. A lot of us tend to think of mobile as technology. I beg to differ. Mobile is not technology. It's, I mean, mobile is consumer behavior today and that is changing. Today, owing to mobile devices, we know more about each one of us, where we go, what sites we are visiting, who we are talking to, at which point in time, at what is part of our consideration set than we've ever known before. So, the manifestation of technology may change, but it is changing consumer behavior. The third thing that has happened over the last two to three years is that merchandising and retail spaces are narrowing. And there are existing these three models as we were speaking about earlier as well. There is the pure play brick and mortar, where as Hethel said, there are the slightly senior demographic, but at the same time more loyal set of customers. There is the pure play online customer who is by and large a younger demographic and often a deal seeker. And then there is the only channel where, which exists in the middle of both of these universes. From an LTV or a lifetime value perspective, what is becoming more and more apparent is that it is the omni-channel which is the most lucrative of these three sets of people. And therefore the trick lies in taking the first set which is the brick and mortar people to the online destinations, the third set which is the deal seeker, younger audiences to start walking into offline stores and creating higher pies part of the second omni-channel universe. Could I, could I add to that? Um, I, I completely agree with you and I would like to add um, that you say like online and offline is coexistent but I think it's even not coexistent, you cannot exist without. So I would like to take it a step, step further for the future. Um, when you have a brick and mortar store, you cannot exist without e -com at all because it's like only about service and high service. What we see in our stores when the guys and we are in suiting, which is quite a difficult product probably to sell online, but it's still our first, the number one store at the moment, so they get used to it. But when they're in our normal stores um, and they wait for five minutes, they put it on Facebook right away. And for us, what we now try to, to, to invent is that we can respond to that in store at that moment when we see these messages going online. Uh, when you are not going to think like that, you miss out so much business. Um, so I think it's not coexistence at all. You cannot live without it. Sure. Uh, Nitin, uh, from your perspective, I'm sure you will just give us two, three things that you've seen remarkably happening. And uh, probably Google can is the best place to understand trends. I'd like to believe, so I'm sure you, you too. So when you see two, three things that you've seen, has been a real paradigm shift. So, in fact, I was presenting and I can quote some of those numbers. Uh, uh, on the issue of uh, showrooming, I completely uh, on the issue of having both showroom as well as e-commerce presence. I think uh, one stats which I shared just now was if we did a recent research, uh, very clearly 18% of the people who walk into physical retail outlet walked out of the retail outlet and bought online. The second part is 15% of people, 55% uh, of the people who went to an e-commerce site did not buy on the e-commerce site, went to the retail store and they didn't buy. So the question is there is a consumer who is moving seamlessly across these two worlds. It's not about whether I want to be here or not. It's about consumer is on both sides. So uh, think of it that the entire SEC A and B. 300 million Indians are on the net. So what are we talking about? All the brands sitting here are targeting those 300 million. They are, they are not targeting the beyond the 300 million. Now that 300 million people, every one of them have a phone. Every one of them is accessing internet at least once a month. So he or she is definitely going to be researching before he walks into your store. So the first trend which I would say is that one, understand that a consumer who is walking into your store is completely up of what he is walking into buying. Second, I think with the advent of app, it's made life far more easier. Okay? App 
this had the entire history. So imagine I have a Snapdeal app on my mobile. I have gone through it. The Snapdeal app will have my entire history of what I have done on the Snapdeal website. I walk into a retail outlet. And I just need to open that page of Snapdeal. That's it. And I know what to do, what not to do. Now imagine the, uh, I won't say condition, but yeah, it's a, imagine the condition of a retail outlet that a person who is walking into the store is at the same time visualizing the product not only there but at the same time on Snapdeal. So it's going to be a dramatic shift. And uh, my take is that one, understand that the consumer is completely aware of what he is buying. As you rightly said, go RT, you might never even physically retail outlet, but consumer will buy. Second, a consumer who walks in with a smartphone, treat him as if he is a king. Uh, Chip, I just want to add a point. Uh, I, I, just two weeks back, I was in China and we went down to study as to what is the trend and we assumed that that trend will come to India. Now, one interesting fact uh, which came across in addition to what everybody else said is that one of the big distinctions we see between retail and online retail is that retail is seen as an entertainment destination. It's, it's seen as a family destination. You go, you enjoy, and then you shop. And it seems that a uh, 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 web or a mobility is a personal destination. And the Hotstar is proving it to us that it's, it's, it's your way uh, kind of stuff. And I got some very interesting analogies. We know China has become the largest e-retail market in the world. There's no doubt that e-retail revolution has happened there. One of the things uh, which I heard from the largest marketplaces uh, people there is that that marketplace is an entertainment destination now. So as an online retail company, they see people, top 20% of their customers spending more than one and a half hours every day on their website. What are they doing there? That, that, they're not playing games there. So what kind of entertainment a consumer used to derive by going to a, a mall I think the newer generation or the newer customer, I will not use the word generation, customer is deriving out of online. I think the challenge lies with the technology or the solution or the experience providers to ensure that that kind of an experience is given online and I think consumer will shift because to add to uh, his point, I think consumer wants convenience, consumer wants access. I don't know, in this room, does anybody want to pay more? Nobody wants to pay more. I don't care whether I go to retail or online. I want to pay the least possible. So, and I think uh, Snapdeal app was a fantastic example. I will compare it, and if you even send me 10 paisa more, and I put the location money, I will still not pay. Uh, I, I don't pay. So, I wanted to highlight that it's, become an, it, it's about using internet and converting it into an entertainment destination. Then the distinction between retail and online is diminished. Just want to add uh, two examples. Uh, to support Nitin's point and Sam's point, uh, other uh, two big areas which uh, what has happened in the last two three years, you know, if I can highlight, for Snapdeal, more than two thirds of the sale is coming from tier two and tier three towns. So I think what e-commerce has done is really engaged people in those remote areas who don't have, who didn't have access to malls and you know all the brands for which they had to travel long distance and purchase. Suddenly they have accessible, you know, they have choices. Those choices were never available in India. And with the international brands coming in, even more choices are going to be available. You know, and, and the second area, I think, which e-commerce has really sort of engaged uh, you know, community is the merchants and the sellers. You know, the small guys you know, who never had option to, to kind of go beyond their catchment area. And suddenly, the online world has you know thrown open their, their shop to the whole country. So I think that has really helped you know everyone you know in the ecosystem and the whole economy, you know, the retail economy. Kind of give it another slip. Well, at this point I would say one thing, definitely the trend is towards digital, whether it is for content consumption or to actually buy online and you know, we it's, it's a no-brainer now. So whatever we are discussing seems to be the trend and you know, whether it's a private equity player or a large corporate house in India, they have realized this and making their investments in that direction. Having to add, as a brand, Puma has been on the forefront, we've always used digital as a way of marketing creating events, we are on the for forefront of e-commerce. So I am not I am not wanting to go against this trend. But I will raise my ha hand up and say say something to you, Samarjeet, at this stage, that irrespective of what we think that today digital can give, and probably that scores why 
it should become only in all these discussions. There are definite advantages of physical retail which cannot come through digital. An experience of buying a product, let's say a running product of 12,000 rupees, irrespective of how you make it, how much of experience you give online through various you know, simulations and videos, as much as trial can happen, comparison of wearing 10 products and trying it, having a service level with, 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 with a guy who really understands you and we Indians, let's face it, really like service. I have gone to stores and a lot of times I ask where is the store manager and you would be surprised to know. Sometimes the store manager is out with a consumer, well with a customer for a drink and this is a reality because that's the kind of relationship the customers build with store staff service. So there are definitely, uh, I would say you cannot, it's like saying that you know, I, I, I have my reservations in saying that today a tea mall in China can completely give an experience of entertainment in a, in a shopping center. Can I respond? Yeah, yeah. First, firstly, I can see uh, in, in some respect that, uh, that that kind of experience today is surely not uh, doable online. But uh, there, is a, there is a saying in technology and there is a saying for a normal person, they say that you believe and then you see. Right? Uh, normally, uh, normally people like me, they see and then they believe. Uh, but from a technology perspective, I'll not rule that out. But having said that, and I'm sticking to an example on Tmall. So, uh, uh, in fact, I was studying Tmall, that was a case model, here itself. Uh, on Tmall, 85% of the consumer interaction uh, with the customer service executive happens before sales. 85% of the interaction happens before sales. And of the total interaction, 85% is on chat. And the entire pre-sales experience conversion goes up six times if the chat happens with the experience. I've seen those charts. I think these are extremely intriguing discussions between a very smart customer service executive who's trying to explain. And by the way, they're using WeChat. They're using all kind of interactions. A consumer sends a picture to an executive, uh, the other, other agent saying, this is the kind, this is my build, this is what I do. They're sharing, they're, they're, they're telling them there are so many products, they're saying, you can use this, you can use this, you can use this. So I think, very small example, this one kind of, I don't know what kind of technologies can work. I saw a technology where they put it in a mall, um, JD, which is the second largest website in China, where you walk into a mall and you step on it and it starts taking measurement of your shoes. So this, there's a company which is accumulating that data. There's another company which is accumulating body types, uh, they're accumulating that data and it's all entering into this thing. My understanding is, if if consumers get comfortable, it doesn't seem to be comfortable to giving your body type. Uh, even I found it a little uh, But if this is happening, I think we should believe and we will see. In fact, uh, there is, uh, I think, yeah. but probably your experience, do you think these trends would mean that this can, that the switch can completely happen from real retail to the digital retail? Well, uh, what I am seeing is like I wanted to purposely speak the last or the second last is because I am a born retailer and uh, I can see a shift from brick and mortar to online not in the consumer even in the supplier and the brand people also Abhishek for Abhishek I was the most preferred in the business business partner uh, but now he has more. <laughs> But yes, <laughs> but uh, let's let's see one thing that retail online is not social. We are losing an experience wherein a father and son walks into the store, and son or father shows him they listen uh, to his wife and take a solution that whether it looks good on me or not. So that kind of a society if it happens, just try to imagine like we say police does nothing and nothing like this. And try a city like be in a city where there is no policing. Will you be able to sleep peacefully? Go to a city which has do, which do not have a retail store. How will your picnic or your experience in a market will happen? It will be nil. You get my point what I am trying to say. Go to a store, go to a mall which has no retail, only food, only entertainment digital, only gaming it will be without an experience. 
will come back with no memories. Maybe, maybe, and maybe a Snapdeal kiosk. <laughs> yes, Snapdeal kiosk cannot give a fee. You know, he cannot come and like he cannot go to his wife to listen how this shirt looks like, good at me or not. So this is what is happening in our lifestyle also. That now ladies are busy on their laptop or their, this thing and hardly asking their husband whether should I buy this or not. Or that experience which is going on, someday the society would be more digital, less social and without an emotion. We need to keep that balance within this. That's, that's what is one side of the story. But the other side of the story is yes, uh, brick and mortar and online is both are good there. On this, there's a lot of discussion happen. I don't want to push into that. But <laughs> just a small suggestion: that let's give our next generation a society which is which has emotions, which has feel, which is more social. Uh, just to add to this, uh, no doubt today we are living in an integrated world of online offline. So for retailers, uh, presence in both the platforms is very much important. And now coming to a specific point, either uh, brick and mortar is right or online is right, what proportion you should be there, it all depends on the categories also. Today, uh, if you are talking about experience, uh, people who walk into uh, Starbucks, either they are going for a coffee or they are going for an experience. Starbucks, they sell coffee as, before coffee they say that it's your first home and workplace and then say that it's a coffee shop. So such kind of experience. So retailers, now what is a wake up call to the brick and mortar retailers is what is the kind of customer experience you are giving at your store that really matters. And some categories are there where customer choice may not be come to a store and experience it that will have a badly impacted in a short term mainly at the digital uh, uh, and this electronics footwear because I know what is my size of a footwear, I know what is a uh, brand I want to buy. And why should I go into a store and buy it when an online, online retailer is giving me a better, uh, uh, what do you say, a deal? So it, it, it's it's as long as yeah, as long as it is a price game. Nah, I, yeah, see, I, I see that's what. Footwear is a technology. You can just cannot uh, just once you know your model that this is what you want. Yes, of course, second buy you can do. So that's what I'm telling you. Yeah. That's what. Because I know what I have to buy and what is my brand and what is my size. I may buy online because being a Indians are conservative when you are being tempted with good deals online, it's yeah. going. But there's on a long run... There's a discrepancy in what you were saying actually because uh, online and offline, I think they are really interrelated. But to get the same experience, you need a very high service online as well and in the end and I'm sure also India will move to that that people are willing to pay more money for as much service online as offline and that it will not be about price points only online as well I'm, I'm yeah, sure. yeah yeah of course see I'm, I'm not talking about the marketplaces I'm talking about the same uh, brand who is having the online presence when we are in an integrated so it's, it's not about finding the best deal in terms of money it's finding the best deal in terms of service so uh, I just wanted to add one point. I personally think, uh, and maybe the question could be, would, would the old retailing experience change technology or new technology will change the retail experience? My understanding is it's, it's the second part. And, and, and there should not be a denial about that changes. I personally think this new technology is here to stay. Time Magazine gave internet as the invention of the century. If we don't accept it, I think we are being archaic here. The second point is that if technology is going to shape the retail experience, why aren't we adapting? Why aren't we pushing a retail store to give a far personalized experience, pushing it to that direction rather than making this a debate with retail versus uh, online? Right? It's, it's a time for retail to change and I'm not saying that retail is not needed. I think it's human beings need to interact with all this remain. To your second point, uh, I also wanted to say that I think social interaction is changing. I personally want to really emphasize that it's my personal uh, opinion. I think I've become far more social after technology has come into my life. I interact with my friends far more. Yes, I meet them less. That doesn't mean it's the quality and the style of interaction has changed. The quantity and the quality of interaction has increased. So let's, let's move to the... Uh, I'll just, yeah. just want to add to that. 
Uh, I think, uh, like the lady said uh, while she was presenting, uh, it's not versus anymore. So brands, once they decide at the strategical level, tactical level, what they want to achieve out of digital, it could be increased uh, footfalls into your physical stores, right? It could be anything under the sun. It's more of a tactical, strategical decision rather than, you know, technological decision. As far as I'm concerned, technology is the easiest piece. How do you want to use that technology is what comes. How can you use technology to, in, you know, uh, showcase your brand in a much brighter way, are present everywhere, you know, how can you uh, use technology to provide better experience at your physical store level or online like the lady said, right? And uh, one more thing before, uh, and I think uh, what I've noticed, and this, I, this I've noticed in the early stages of e-commerce in the US also, uh, the brands have to think hard. Uh, and th this demarcation between physical versus online, offline comes right from the top. So if you change yourself at the very top, I'm pretty sure you can make the most of both, you know, both the worlds. You can get uh, what you want. I mean, uh, Nitin was talking about Macy's. They've done a terrific job. This holiday, last holiday season, I was there at Macy's 8th uh, Street store in uh, New York. And I bought physically from that store. And I was inside that store and also bat, uh, you know, bought a lot of stuff through my iPad because the sizes were not available to the, in that particular store. It was seamless. So, yeah. Yeah, thanks, Hussain. It's actually, I wanted to shift the discussion to that side uh, to say, and I completely agree with you, uh, Samajit, that the movement is happening and brands, retailers, and service providers if they don't endorse this change, if they are in denial mode, it is very clear that they will perish. There might be a lot of inertia towards it. Those with greater inertias will lose more and those with less will progress ahead. So let's move the discussion a bit more to this, to this convergence of offline and online and as well how things would change, uh, how both sides will benefit with each other or how will digital commerce or new technology or new way of content consumption will change India? So, anybody on that front? So, how do you think? So, let's talk about the future, not just the last two, three years. See, sir, as everything comes around, you know, even the fashion comes again and this thing. So, this round and this shift will happen. You know, the retailers which has the selling point which are physically present in the all these locations and all those things, they will probably online will get dependent upon them. Listen, you have a point uh, of sales or delivery, we use your point and get it there. But at the end of the day, the retailer uh, would again come back uh, with a bit. Of course, uh, you have to keep updated your stores, your service standards, and experience at the store. Retail, retail is age old, uh, uh, this thing, Dukandari ya Vepari is not going to die like this. In fact, uh, Abhishek, I would say that from an experience standpoint, I, I think it like this. I think a consumer goes through a discovery, then he goes through an experience, and then he goes through consumption, a commerce for consumption. So he normally closes these three cycles. If you realize the post-evaluation. And the post uh, in that respect. So I would say that on a discovery front, if you see any surveys, any consumer uh, uh, data, I think in, in the developed world, in, the, in, in segments below 35, it's as high as 90 percent that we will discover online, uh, discover the mobility or any technology medium before they go to a store. Uh, in an audience which is above 35, it's at an angle of 70 percent. So I personally think technology will have a very strong role at a discovery level. At a user experience level, I personally think retail will have a very strong role to play and it keeps on playing a role. It's up to technology to innovate and see that can they come more innovative technologies where the experience could be even better online than potentially offline. So you're working for a furniture retailer in the US where you can actually drape a sofa. So for example, you go to a, today you, in, in your life, uh, real life experience, you go to a retail store, you see a sofa, it's draped in a particular drape. But you cannot chase a drape because you know the wall colors in your home, you know how my paintings are going to look. But there's a technology by which you can take that sofa into that system and keep on putting 20,000 drapes on it and keep on putting in your house by clicking a photograph of your house. 
to me, now this is an experience you cannot have at the store. So there, potentially technology wins. But in case as a, a, a servicing, that if you want to try something, it's a new thing, it's, 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 a, it's potentially a marriage trousseau or something which is very personal, very interesting. I don't think it's online, so the technology would potentially be able to buy it in any possible way. I think as we shift to the third part, which is commerce or the consumption part, I think wherever I'll find it lesser, I'll buy it, uh, whether it is this way. I think on a post, post consumption experience, I personally think today, maximum people, if they're happy or they're unhappy, they end up posting on social media, maybe uh, uh, Facebook can throw some light on it. And today, that's because the social CRM is the biggest angle. If you're not reading that, uh, you, you could be an interesting story. People don't come to a store saying, Arit, I'm going to do Because that's, who would take a car, go down and fight with that car. People would write it even instantaneously on a, on a social media because you have access. So I, I have this like, discovery for potential phase. And, and just to add to Summer's point, if you actually have that technology where you could change colors and you know get into 20,000 different colors for the same sofa, I mean, again, see, it's complementary. You could use it for your web infrastructure, and you could also use the same technology within your own store. So this is exactly what has been there, the tweet mirrors, the magic mirrors, these have been concepts which are existing in retail. I experimented with tweet mirror around five years back where you could see it in the store, you are on some and you can press the screen and then tweet it to your friend as to uh, how you are looking. So one of the points Dabanji, that you were raising, uh, that you know, uh, the social aspect of it, yes it is very relevant, but I am sure the e-commerce will uh, cover that up with ease, with lot of ease actually, because it's, it's just communicating that how will it look on me. But it's also uh, this comfort, the flexibility that you will get with the number of options that you can uh, play around and then how do I look in that versus the tire sum of if you have to try 20 onsums versus checking 20 onsums on digital world, it, it's not a change. So, that's I mean, what it is. Yeah, but technology also plays spoil mode. I mean, think about it, if you, I meet my friends like once in three months and we all, you know, sharing a drink or eating out, whatever. Most of us are always on our phones. Right? So, uh, their technology is, I mean, I feel personally, this, I mean, people may disagree, but there, yeah, I mean, uh, we are becoming less social, uh, even when we are physically present together. So, that we need to really think about, and I think it again starts from the grassroots level. So, if my kid is four years old, uh, she would only have access to my phone for like 15 minutes in a day, so she can go out and play more rather than, you know, get stuck in an Xbox or my phone. So, yeah. I may say so. Uh, see, technology is changing the way we, the consumers behaving today. It is absolutely up to us, as brands, as businesses, as to decide how far we are willing to go to meet the customer on their journey. Going back to the example that Summer was just sharing, there are companies in India. If you look at Lenskart, Lenskart today has started out your know, play as an online uh, eyewear store. Today they have physical stores. They have simulations where you can upload your image and check out 50 sunglasses or you know prescription glasses, see how they're looking on you. You can tweet it, send it to your friends, ask for peer endorsement and so on and so forth. So there is, while the entire physical experience thing is lacking, it all comes back the full circle because you know if if you think of it traditionally, let's let's go back 50 years back or 100 years back, think of India back in, in, in the villages or even today in, in, in the tier 4 you know, villages, towns, small towns, you go to your neighborhood Kirana store, okay, the guy still knows you. Abhishek, you walk in, he says, Mr. Gangli, how are you? Good to see you back. How's your mother now? La last time you took the sugar for me, I recommended this. How did that go for you? Now, that experience is not something which businesses or brands at scale with multiple brick and mortar stores, franchisees can offer. Service, yes, people will talk to you politely. Will they know you, about you, about your choices, about what? That is what is now begun to be offered online. And we call it personalization at scale. So today when I go to Snapdeal, the next time I go to Snapdeal, Snapdeal knows that these are the five things that I checked out last time. It will show me recommendations, basis a recommendation engine saying, Pratik, this is what you looked at. This is what you're more likely to like. Last year, around this time of the year, it was your wife's birthday, you bought her a dress, another 
you know, if that time of the year is coming, maybe you can evaluate these five. So that entire personalization and scale piece is what is making it an, a very, very interesting game changer. Which, and it's entirely up to us is how we... Well, that's, well, that's what I must, however, say. Yes, this looks theoretically very right. I have been an online shopper for the last 3-4 years since probably online started. I have never been personally targeted with what I want to buy. You know? Absolutely. And there's a reason to it. Uh, coming back to you, I, I'll just add to your point. Uh, uh, you absolutely bang on that. The reason being that you as a consumer, you know, you may be going through your office machine onto that website and shopping from there, uh, from your iPad, from your cell, from 30,000 different devices, right? Now, uh, whenever we talk about retargeting or personalization, correctly there are only a couple of places where you see customer stitching, which means irrespective of Abhishek, shape, whether he comes from his cell phone, or whether he comes from his iPad, or whether he comes from his laptop, office machine, wife's phone, kid's game box, whatever. So, they know. And then they give you recommendation. And currently, that technology is not being used by a lot of players in India. But if you go outside, then you see a lot of players where so they only recommend that. If I may just add to that, and that's, I mean, the point that you've just mentioned is precisely what, I mean, so apologies for a blatant plug here, but at Facebook, that's the only thing we bring to the customer. Because if you're the same, on an iPad or an iPhone. That's after I've logged into your platform. Not which is that. across devices. Right. Which across across devices. devices. Which Correct. Is in your case, about it's real it's identity. It's not about sessions, it's not about cookies. Absolutely. Absolutely. In so. your case, it stands to be because as a Facebook user, anyways, I need to log in first. But he's talking about a shopping experience. I'm not, I don't need to really log in when I go to Amazon. I may be just browsing. Right. Which is why remarketing on Amazon is important. Yeah, of course, it's a bit, they're doing it for the time. So, yeah, yeah. But, uh, it remembers me of an ad of uh, Abhishek Bachchan, you know, where he says that will be a uh, 10 digit number 9814098140. Let's not go towards that thing when I, as a Darpan Kapoor, lose an identity and my mobile number becomes an identity. You know? So, real identity is about you being Darpan Kapoor irrespective of being on your mobile device, your tablet, your computer, your office computer, or desktop, the entire space. Uh, there's not yes, like the Facebook and all those things that have gone so much into our personal life. They know each and every habit of us, leaving about uh, our buying pattern or our uh, uh, traveler or something like this. They know about EMIs, our default, uh, this thing, which is now open so much to the society, which is actually required. I'm not saying it is not required. But that I'm just worried about this thing, it's, it should not become like my uh, again take is like let's face a market which is all only digital. There is no experience, there is no display, there is no VM, there is no human person selling a garment or something like this. So brick and mortar for a brand, for our small consumer is an experience which should be respected and given a due importance. Okay. Okay. So let's, uh, from let's a technology talk perspective, about. I think as, as India online companies, You've not done a great job. So your complaint is absolutely right. Uh, and that's why the conversion rates are hanging between 2.5 to 3 percent versus an Amazon or something which is at 78 percent. So yes, your complaint is fair. But I think let's not lose sight of that technology has that capability. Right? So I think as Indians we have failed, not technology. Sure. That's a possibility and okay. Now let's talk of omnichannel. Let's get into we've been speaking about omnichannel. Uh, we so from all of it, all of us, we've kind of agreed that Omnichannel is a way forward. Now what does that mean for India? And how can brands and retailers and service providers in this space leverage on this? Uh, okay, uh, I would like to add up, like somebody talks here, like the, in India, people are not doing good in the online. Why they are not doing good? They say, now we come on the Omnichannel. Because people are not on the Omnichannel. They have different databases. They have different databases uh, for their online. They have different databases for their uh, brick and mortar stores. They have different sites for their mobility, right? So, number one, their product content is different. When the product content is different, product information is different, then 
the consumer lose, loses his interest in you, right? And the second thing, when you have the different different databases, your CRM is different. When the CRM is different, say the lady have bought two red dresses. In the promotion, you are sending again same promotion for that dress. How can she buy? If she's not buying the skinny jeans and you are sending a promotion of skinny jeans, so it is totally wastage of promotion. Then there is not the visibility or the transparency of say the inventory, right? So you need a single database. There is the inventory, like it's a totally visible. It can't go out of stock, right? So that is the only channel. This is basically there are a number of things. So I'm telling you about these are the three main things, sure. which is essential for the omni channel. Sure. So Nitin, before you, you have to go, so uh, it might be a repeat of what you have already spoken in the other forum, but the opportunity that is omnichannel, the challenges, the enablers, if you can just tell us quickly. Uh, I think the opportunity is huge. Uh, all of us have agreed here. Uh, minimum, minimum, minimum 100 billion dollar industry online shopping, right? And offline is going to be 1.2. So just imagine 1.2 industry. I think the biggest challenge for us would be how do we ensure that the user experience. So before e-commerce happened or before internet happened, we used to say customer is the king. Now user is the king. So if you can get the user experience, whether it is on physical retail store or whether it is on the mobile or it is on the tablet or any form uh, wherever the consumer comes from, I think user experience will be the key to it and as you rightly said, I think currently, if I look at the entire digital platform, everyone is focused on the consumption part. No one is focused on the discovery part. I think if you see most of the experiences on websites today, in, so it's like 20 years back, you would walk into a mom and pop store and the experience would be, if you see from today's physical retail experience versus 20 years back, you would walk into a store and you would be standing behind the counter, the salesman would be standing on that side of the counter and saying, Okay, kya chahiye? Achha, shirt chahiye, ye char shirt hai, chahiye to leno. And you would pick up one. Today, you walk into a shopper stop or a lifestyle, you are allowed to walk through the aisle and say, Okay, I can touch, feel, everything, I'll see hundreds of shirts and then pick it up. I think e-commerce is in that Kirana store outlet form at this point of time. The discovery is still, I would say, terrible. Uh, I know my good friend from Snapdeal is sitting here, might not like it, but yeah, it's not about Snapdeal, but any other, any website, I think we are still in that mode where we are saying, how do I get the customer to transact? Because that is what is most important, I have paid money to get into my website, so I want to get him to transact. I am not bothered whether I am able to create a consumer experience or a user experience which will bring him back, maybe a few days or a few weeks, and I think that that's the biggest challenge. Thanks, I have to leave guys because I am not leaving. Sure. Thanks, Vivek. Thanks for joining us. Uh, well, on that front, on the on the Omni Channel front, uh, to continue on there, the opportunity, challenge, and enabler. So, if any of you can talk about that. I think, I mean, uh, it's about consistency. When, when you're talking about different channels, I think the main thing that we try need to think about, think about, is cons being consistent across the so that the you know value is not diluted and uh, there's immediate recognition irrespective whether this customer sees you in store digital as an advertisement or on your own web infrastructure whatever so i think consistency is the keyword where the brand has to think about technologies are just enablers facilitators right you get tons of technologies out there which would help you to facilitate that i mean you talked about uh, uh, you know different pieces of uh, databases, you, you have connectors, you could possibly, you know, without reinvesting your money into new one single piece of software, you could have uh, invest small and get connectors which connect all these different pieces together as one. Yeah, so consistency and then technology is always there. Uh, maybe it's not already there for India, and so I'm sorry if, if I'm making an irrelevant point. But what we're now trying to do is, is, is there's a system we call the cloud uh, and everything is connected and I think you'll talk about that. So when a customer has called to customer service, uh, we, we catch that message. When you are in store and you recognize that customer, you can see what he posted on Facebook. 
what, when his call was, when he had the last buy, what sizes he bought. So everything is going to be interconnected. So it's also digital only channel. I think that that, that should be the future um, in two years maybe in India. I'm not so sure what is possible. Uh, and then most important there is social media and, and, and mobile devices two together. I think that's it. Is it? Yeah. I just want to make a point. Uh, I think I, I agree with the comments that for omnichannel we are still a couple of years behind in terms of the technology infrastructure, in terms of the maturity, you know, in terms of where we are. So let me ask you a very specific question. Snapdeal. How can Snapdeal leverage omnichannel? I think today we are just focused about, you know, there is so much out there in terms of consumption, uh, you know, uh, so much consumption opportunity, you know, to capture, to serve. There are millions of consumers who don't have access, there are millions of sellers, you know, who are trying, who are trying to increase the business. I think that, that opportunity is too large for all offline and online players. So I think next couple of years are going to be focused on that. And as we go along, you know, the ex consumer experience part, the technology infrastructure will improve and then probably, you know, something like Omnichannel will, will take shape, will start taking shape in our country. So for a platform like Snapdeal, you think that it is two years too early to leverage on Omnichannel with brands and uh, other categories? No, I, I'm, not, I'm not giving a timeline. All I'm saying is, you know, if you think of other sectors, for example, FMCG, grocery, you know, for example, you know, there might be a time where where you order, let's say, you know, a, a, you know, bread, you know, and which gets delivered to your home from your local Kirana store, right? So there could be a possibility like that, but that we are still far away from that that, that stage. Right? Yeah, of course. I mean, I asked this very uh, important for Puma. We are going omnichannel, and uh, we will go omnichannel, which means that whether it is Puma Shop or let's say a platform, it can be any of the platform. It can even be you know a Flipkart or a Snapdeal where you can place order online so your customer gets acquired there, uh, content gets consumed digitally <coughs> and then the trial happens in the store and the delivery can happen from the store. So you'll, ri you'll literally have 340 warehouses which have gone marketplace. It's a huge challenge as far as I am concerned and the reason I say this is I'll keep diving into this at this stage. I'll give you an example. Theoretically, sounds very good Kiran that your store inventory is online, customer goes online, buys it, gets delivered from the closest store to your pin code. Uh, or somebody goes to a store, doesn't find a size, and then goes to the shop, buys it from some other store which is on the marketplace. A great idea, right? It seems like an idea so easy. But I'll tell you the challenge in India. Today a store in India has what is called shrinkage. Right? And the shrinkage today is measured by Indian retailers like you had 100 pieces, you now don't have let's say 4 pieces of a particular article and you have 3 pieces extra of another article. So you literally lose one piece and financially that's your loss. That's how your book is a loss. Right? And every brand, every retailer has their own benchmark of this shrinkage which is a reality. At Puma we are 0.3% very happy, right? Because that's a great standard. But when you go omni-channel, it's not the difference of what you have lost and what you have extra, which is important. It is the entire difference because data online has to match at a size level. What if you take an order of a product in a different size and which is not physically there? So today, even for a brand which is 0.3% on shrinkage, might have 7% discrepancy at the size level because the store guys are not today has the, have the culture to actually match product to product at a size level. So they are today looking at what is the actual loss which is the delta between what you have excess and what you have. But when you are uploading that data to do commerce on that data, these are some basic so, uh, challenges. I think it can be easily resolved. Uh, when you know your shrinkage numbers, and you already have your uh, back end, you know, where you have your uh, current inventory holdings. You could set up a value that if this uh, product uh, falls below this quantity, then it automatically stops for sale for your online channels. Sorry, but this we thought. Yeah. And then we met, met people who have done Omni Channel in, say, UK. Right. And you say that, okay, you say your store will only 
be visible. The product which has more than five pieces per size is what is visible, right? But if you say five or say even three per size, for a brand like us having 1200 SKUs across sizes, if you take three out, literally 80% of the inventory is out. Okay, so these are some practical issues. Then you should have the, the leading inventory should be e-com and not the stores. You can change it like that. The leading inventory is of the warehouse and not the store? Yes. There is a challenge to that as well. So the challenge is that most of the brands work with mother warehouses, which are generally a large warehouse, which are not equipped to do single piece shipments. Uh, but that you have to solve. <laughs> But there are different cultures of supply chain of that. Yeah, okay, I get it. Abhishek, talking to Omnichan, we being a MNC, like a brand uh, in India, we have FDA norms, we can't go online. We are on Hybris and our uh, online presence is ready as a catalog website. We are waiting for Coleman norms to be first in place. There is no clarity on online and most of the brands are doing online really uh, how they do it's out of box. So that is one big challenge where we are waiting to go online. The second thing as you said you can make your inventory visible within your brick and mortar stores and online stores but bringing marketplaces into this is a big challenge because the marketplaces everyone has their different way of operations. So th that that is a long way. I think the online store and the brick and mortar can be bought in a uh, nearby uh, time if we can get a proper uh, norm on FDA policies. Actually my perspective was that I completely agree with you. My understanding is that only channel is a cultural shift in an organization. I mean, it's a big change at the retail level and the organization level. Can you share your experience that since you're getting there, uh, what were the challenges and how, how you got faced? Because I, as, a, as a service provider I would love to learn about this experience. the cultural change has to happen if you have to combine the two uh, people at the retail level the store staff has to get used to ship packing for online and shipping for online they are not used to doing it they have to ensure that the, the way they manage their inventory and the inventory data integrity between the system and what is there physically has to happen to the T so that the cultural orientation to match size by size has to happen at, at, at every store. So if you have to integrate only channel 340 stores of ours today has to have that culture. It's not easy to do. Supply chain wise is such a challenge. Secondly, for a global brand, even if foreign direct investment of retail is allowed, online is not allowed. So there is, so when you get an order online, can you ship from a store? Is that online order or is it a physical order? Probably it's an online order and that's not allowed. So there are there are various stages in it, you know, for, for a service provider, you know, uh, or a technology company, it might seem that why don't brands do converge all of this and this go, and it, it seems so theoretically nice, uh, uh, but, but there are definite challenges on that front. So I'll ask you, uh, Pratik, what do you think from, from your perspective? Uh, on, on in terms of content consumption or in terms of understanding consumers better, having a single platform, how can both offline and online retail benefit from this? Uh, so, a couple of things. The entire uh, approach to the invent concern that you just voiced is a very valid one. It's also very uh, ingrained in reality in India, there are global brands like the Walmarts of the world which are doing extremely successful real-time ERP inventory management where even the smallest of articles, whether it's online, whether it's offline, is getting captured, getting deducted in, in real-time, that is something that is happening. At the same time, there are companies like Amazon which is globally leading more than $7 billion only on shipments, okay, which, which is an, in the long term not very viable for any brand, any business, like, like we said. 
and so will mushroom various formats. Whether it's a click and carry where I order something online right now and on my way back home, stop by the local Kirana store, pick it up, thereby you know reducing the entire middleman in, in the uh, interim, or even uh, Amazon India for that matter. And there are a lot of, uh, in fact, Snappy day before yesterday announced four-hour delivery in top, top ten cities. Amazon has uh, tied up with uh, the Indian Postal Service for the last mile delivery. Uh, they are also, they've also tied up, they're doing, they did a pilot in Mumbai with the Kirana store last mile delivery, where you order something online and your local Kirana store guy actually pushes it back home to your uh, point on groceries and, you know, everyday uh, articles being sent home. So this entire ecosystem will now the, that's the opportunity at hand. You know, so on one hand, there is the entire science, technology, this virtual reality, augmented reality coming together uh, where, where you have peer endorsement. We need not go that extreme. There are viable models much before that. That's the opportunity at hand to be able to do that address it real time. And, and to come back to your point on Amazon, the biggest challenge for them is that they don't have bigger model uh, points. They are just getting into that space now. Exactly. Yeah. It's just As well. Yeah. Well, think we've, we were talking about some of the success stories of Omnichannel that you have had. And you feel that India probably a couple of years or whenever. Uh, we were discussing on how the integration has helped. So can you share some light on that? Um, what, what we see is that um, for for us, the customers that have been in our stores, then afterwards are really willing to buy. Can you first tell us what kind of uh, channel structure you have? Um, the channel structure is that we started with, with stores, brick and mortar stores, and now we're investing uh, most heavily in, in e-commerce on the side. So what we do is when we enter a market, we see via e-commerce if there is a market. And we just don't make money, we just ship and see if there is a market there. Then we open stores. When the store is open, we get back into the e-commerce for the pickup and the service and everything. So it's, it's completely one integrated system that we have there. We cannot have it without each other. That's the only thing that we have learned so far. Uh, and now we're into building apps that you send a picture uh, of your body. And with all the measurements that we have made, we know the size. And then we can send you also with high service from e-commerce to your house. It's actually in line with what you were saying. Um, so we see the future completely on technology, which is actually a lot of fun. Uh, it's, it's, really, it's really a cool thing that's going to happen, but I'm not, I'm not sure for India when it will happen or arrive here. I thought with Puma you're already far. No, but you are. Yeah, we are. Yeah. So, okay, on, on the mobile bit, it's, it's, so what do you think? Mobile is an opportunity as commerce shifts to mobile, both on the discovery exploratory phase as well as the commerce space. How can things change and some of the remarkable things that has happened mm. across the world? Yeah, maybe you know better. Um, I, I just have one thing maybe you can answer. We just uh, bumped into a, um, an issue that we would like to solve. How can you recognize customers? before they're in your store, or when they're in your store, could you do that via mobile devices? Do you have any clue? No, I think we should speak about it. Um, I think there's a technology where the face recognition is, is a technology. I think they have bought a company in that direction. And I think bigger application of it potentially could be in a retail store when a consumer walks in, you identify as a bit as someone and say, welcome, because today it's in an organized retail setup, it's very difficult to identify. It's a consumer number, one, two, three, four, because it's, a, it's a written on an invoice last time. Right? So I personally think technology will do those cool things that people think it's pointed out. On the, on the mobility side, um, just taking a very macro picture, um, my understanding is that today we are spending more time on this than any other screen. Uh, and I think that speaks for itself. Uh, though we become a multi-screen uh, individuals, so when we're watching television, we're still doing a WhatsApp, we're doing a Facebook, but I think primarily because it's, it's a very personal device, it's, it's like an extension of your hand. I personally think if people start taking three to four hours of your daily media consumption uh, time, and if you take three and four hours of your media consumption time, and if you remove sleeping, working, sleep, driving time, it's, it's going to be higher than 50 to 60 percent of your media consumption time, and that could be serious, serious uh, tent into whatever mobility. So, 
uh, on the mobile device piece, absolutely in line with what Samaji just said, but this being an extension of each one of us today, okay, and that comes to bear as giving you the identity when you walk into a store, it's up to us as to how we capitalize on that thereafter. Something interesting that we are seeing a lot of players getting into is to start moving away from the entire transactional nature of a mobile app or a device alone and getting into the sticky content aspect. You know, because like, like Samit just mentioned, if you are spending three to four hours on a mobile device browsing content every day, you sooner than later want that consumer to spend that, that spend 45 minutes on, on Snapdeal and not just seeking deals. Also, also social. So for example, Absolutely. if you have to choose, so what my take on today the mobile apps, at least the ones on the fashion and lifestyle space, that they are only enabling the commerce, what was there on the website is now got into an app. Whereas the opportunity for a mobile is enormous. A desktop today doesn't have contacts, a desktop doesn't have a camera. So there are a lot of things a mobile has which can be used by e-commerce apps uh, uh, which, uh, which, uh, uh, which cannot happen on a desktop. But those are not there on the app at this stage. So it's, it's an interesting what we do now when we send something, we have a, uh, how do you call it? You can put your phone on, you put your phone on and you make a video. At that moment you call FaceTime with customer service, they look at you and they say, I think you should shorten or, or extend your sleeves with five inch or one inch or five centimeters, all that stuff. And it does work when you when you go think like that. And at least experience is so nice. They will come back and be, stay your loyal customer. In fact, the point I was trying to highlight for the Chinese example was that we've always seen customer service post-consumption. Exactly. I, I think it's, it's a big mistake. We it's should, we should mistake. see it pre-sales. And, and yeah. technology can add tremendous value to that. And put your best salespeople and customer service. One, one additional point, I think what, what is not very visible is, if you look at the data being generated through a mobile, tons of data today which is being generated you know, through various channels. And that data is not being crunched, it's not being used for personalization, for targeting customers. It's going to happen. I think those technologies, those solutions are evolving. So it's just a matter of time. So it's going to be a very strong channel for for understanding whom you're targeting, how you should target, how you should you know, interact, you know, all of those things. So I think mobile will remain a very significant channel that way. I just wanted to add here. Uh, for my brand, what we did is we have used the mobile technology in a different way. We started a loyalty program which is a completely app-based uh, loyalty program. Like a customer mobile number itself is a loyalty number and he can download the app from both the iOS and Android. And that app is completely having a interconnect with the social media. Like today I buy something, the same product, whatever I bought, will be displayed on the app, on my purchases link. I can just uh, click on a share option and I can share it on a Facebook, Twitter or whatever, uh, uh, the G plus or something. And for this, what we are trying to do is, we are trying to give social points to the customer, which can be redeemed back again in the store as a loyalty, pro loyalty uh, points. So we interlinked the purchase points as well as the social points. We made the social connect just for, uh, it, it's very useful for branding for us. Like it's really working and uh, there is a good consumption of these points by the customers and uh, mainly Facebook is adding value for them. I think most of the time that we are talking about all of this, and I'm sorry I didn't speak when I'm consulting, I'm taught the first thing is I need to listen. So, <laughs> that's the first thing that we are taught when we join consulting. Uh, I think Men are taught the same as well. <laughs> Good for us. <laughs> no, but, uh, you know, a lot of this that we are talking about out here, I think all of us are trying to do too many things at the same time. We are trying to recognize, we are trying to, you know, sort of identify, we are trying to create that experience. But you, believe me, the first thing that the customer is looking for when they are talking omni-channel is convenience. They come omni-channel because they want to be able to, you know, sort of interact with your view 24-7. 
What's the difference then? The difference is that, you know, are we trying to do too many things at the same time? Can you explain that then? Because I, I tend to disagree. Why, where should you start and what should you not do? No, no, so I'm not talking about what, where should you start and what you should not do. I'm saying that let us listen to the customer a bit more. If the customer is saying, for me, convenience is important and the reason that I'm getting to your Omni channel because I want to communicate with you 24-7 or have that kind, kind of a thing. Let's just prioritize what we will do. My, you know, uh, experience of working with so many companies today is that one, I think the realist, uh, you know, the physical stores started getting into e-commerce because everybody was doing that in India. Then they realized that, oh, there's been a disruption. I need to take it more seriously. But when you started taking it more seriously, you did not realize that you needed to give a seamless experience. If there was a scheme which was running on the physical store, my customer wanted, uh, our customer wanted to have that availability on the e-commerce as well. So I think when you, when we are talking about doing so many things, we need to really listen to the consumer. Well, maybe you say that you want to have the basis in place first before you take the next step. Absolutely. And when you talked about, let's say, you know, when you were talking about the service experience, <coughs> believe me, customer, when you are talking about IKEA coming to India, I mean, they are they are not on omni channel. No, they are yeah. totally service service yeah. based. So the service has a cost, but can you create that destination out there? So my humble submission is do what you are doing, but first listen to what your customer is asking as a basic. And today they are asking for convenience. Uh, and just to add to that point, uh, you have to give it simple. You may have the best technology in the world, you may have the best products, and you, you may be the biggest brand in, in, under the sun, but if you make it complex for the uh, end user, uh, definitely um, you know, you're not going to get the same kind of results you expect. Sure. Okay, so I would like to conclude a bit and probably feel free to add. So we agree that India in the last two, three years has changed a bit, a lot. A lot of consumer buying trends have changed, the way consumption is happening has changed and with the coming in of the digital platforms both in terms of commerce as well as content, content creation and consumption has changed. We did agree that there are benefits of the offline channel primarily in terms of personalization which of course on the online there are opportunities to bridge that gap. Uh, we agree that the physical world does have the benefits of uh, you know, touch and feel, but of course the online with access, larger catalog, convenience is a huge parameter. Technology today can enable more on the digital platform than it is doing today, primarily on the way personalization can happen, use of mobile to enable, uh, to enable commerce and content, user experience improvement. Um, and as well, I think Samarjit put a very good point of focusing on discovery, uh, uh, the experience of uh, buying as well as then the post-consumption, the, the various stages which can be treated in omni-channel in a different manner uh, in, which con in which customers can go through these stages differently. So I think it's very exciting. Uh, the only thing that I would probably end with is that the change is happening whether it is for a consumer or it is for a brand or a retailer or for services companies around it. The faster we endorse this, uh, the better. Listening to the customer is very important. And I think that's where I would like to end this. I would like to thank each one of you for having joined it. We can take a couple of questions if any because we are almost out of time. But if there are questions to any of us, uh, we can quickly do a Q&A. Good afternoon, this is Abhishek. I'm heading the uh, Forever Fashion brand, belongs to JDS Creation. Uh, firstly, a uh, lot of times, especially when it comes to marketplaces, uh, first fascination for the customer point of view, what we are offering right now across marketplaces is the discount. And it's the war going on and on. Started with 30, 40, 50 now. It used to be the only two EOSs, now every day is the same. So my question to uh, you, what and how this will get settled? 
or what would be the scenario because what happens uh, in retail format as you rightly mentioned biggest challenge to offer the seamless margin across omni across different channels we have the similar sort of uh, margin kept in an offering kept in our store probably for our label brand i can offer to marketplaces but which would not be possible for other branch because of the margin when will the war settle i really don't have uh, the timeline but i think it will start settling down the day snapdeal and flipkart go for an ipo so that's when you know your uh, uh, shareholders will come back and say that you know profitability needs to come and these mindless or not mindless but throw away discounts probably will start coming down but i think uh, meanwhile one of the online are taking names out there and then the mobile store if you look at mobile today so this hardly anyone was buying mobile in store so what are they doing and i'm using mobile store as an example i met uh, manshu a few days back and he said we're well, actually forget about you know online versus offline i have to today build my strategy assuming that there is an on online out here which is going to give mobile any day at a price which is much lower what do i do i create value added services i create experience i create seamless experience when they get into my store and what have they done you know once we buy a new mobile the biggest issue that we have is transferring numbers so they are saying that buy a mobile from me i will have somebody help you transfer those numbers the biggest i think benefit of having this particular uh, ld conflict has been innovation and has actually been the way that service levels are actually going to uh, you know are going up in this industry and today when we are talking about you know yesterday somebody yeah, i was talking to one of the uh, grocery uh, this thing and they said oh, we provide 10% discount if my grocery grows late i said is your consumer even expecting that or is he just happy because you know you uh, you know why did that so the war will continue the life i said that but meanwhile i think the biggest focus has to be on client engagement and innovation to yeah yes Yeah, hi. I'm Nikul. Uh, so, uh, I mean, e-commerce has, I agree with you, has certain inherent advantages, or it is supposed to be, uh, you know, offering convenience, a wider array of products, reaching out to consumers where uh, access was not possible, actually saving you from the hassles of parking and so many other things. I mean, but uh, what we have seen is that uh, you know, e-com uh, marketplaces have evangelized themselves to a fair extent, to the extent that they've uh, they get equal credits in discussions like these. and they've done so mostly on the back of price wars and discounting so my question is that uh, do you think uh, i mean this question abhishek you could take it or maybe any uh, other member of the panel uh, the question is that uh, once these uh, even once they come on price parity with with offline do you think uh, that the fraction picture currently what is being talked about for ecom will be completely different i mean when when as i said that if they go ipo and they have shareholder pressure to start delivering profits Do you think that the traction picture for e-commerce will be far, far, far different than what we have seen today? Look, let's face the first things first, and it is linked to what you asked. I don't think while coupons and all of this you read online is coming down, it is coming down, it will come down, but the, there will be a part price disparity because customer acquisition will be an ongoing game. New players will come in. Today, Reliance is coming in. There will be another Tiberia. There will be. Here out there will be the Tatas, and everyone will get into it. But as in, as in, when new players will come in, they will the easiest way to win few balls is to discount and to reduce the price. So I think price will definitely remain as one of the key customer acquisition proposition. It will. Having said that, I come, I come to you, and I would say that in this. process of buying online consumers are seeing the benefit which did not seem to them as a benefit when they when they started buying online on a discount is that of convenience and service and the largeness of the catalog like you know you mentioned about 40 soccer boots available online which you never could in india go to a mall and see for your kid 40 boots you know we as puma or you know the other competition will give very limited spaces to football boots for kids for example 
So largeness of catalog, access, convenience, any time of the night you can buy will become a paramount importance if you as a shopper will start endorsing it even if it is the same price, you know the size that you have to buy for yourself or your wife or your girlfriend or whoever, you will start buying online. So the very purpose, one is of course customer acquisition and competition, why price is being used by these platforms. But what is also happening in the process is they are actually making you understand or endorse the benefits of shopping online and the convenience of shopping online, which will become sticky. Once that happens, then I would like to believe that price will not be the primary motive to buy online. When will that happen? Depends on the category, depends on the situation. I can't put say, okay, one year down the line, price will not be a factor and still people will buy online. So I would say that forget it that things will not get online. Online will grow at the rate of 55% or whatever Rachna was showing it will continue in the next because let's face it it is also growing consumption we agree that we buy things today which we don't need it is increasing consumerism as well so online will grow, grow at astronomic pace pace is my opinion my personal opinion price will remain a factor somewhere or the other but soon we will all realize it once we have bought first time online, that time price was important as the most important criteria. But it will not remain the most important criteria. Uh, just to add a few more words, I mean, uh, it's also uh, the brand that we should think about. Uh, do, do, uh, does this brand want to want to race to the bottom? I mean, that's that issue, right? And you have had such a solid case study. You, you had a target who was on Amazon for such a long period of time. And when the time came and there was a strategical shift uh, in their thinking, they moved away from Amazon and then they you know, started doing sales themselves, online sales. So it's also the onus is, you cannot blame the marketplaces, they have a business model, right? And you as a brand need to have your own business model, right? So I think... Uh, My question is, will the traction evaporate with discounts going on? Uh, I don't think so. Definitely not. Because with convenience and accessibility, I don't think so. I mean, we're going to see a sharp decrease in number just because discounts have, are reduced. I don't see it happening. It's not happened in the US. It's not happened in the mature economies. It surely would not happen here. It will happen more in India, I would say. Next five years, mark this. It will, you will see even more. I don't know. You are in the right space, Vishak. Uh, I think uh, the question you should also think about, uh, is, uh what is the probability of such an event happening? So are you expecting a cartel from brand sides? Are you expecting government intervention? Uh, nothing is already going to happen. So discounts, discounts are happening because brands are getting those inventory. They are putting those inventories willing, willfully on those marketplaces as well. Uh, the second part is that since they are giving that inventory willfully, Anybody can discount it, right? You can you can do that. I can buy five pieces of Puma from anywhere and lift, list it on eBay. What can Abhishek do about it, right? Yes, I cannot do it institutionally because I can buy large inventories and do that. But a lot of brands are giving this inventory is one. I think this, uh, the second part of the game is that this is a customer acquisition cost. Retail versus online, my, my unit economics and my entire cost structure works very differently. So rather investing in the retail cost on rent, on electricity, on AC, I am ready to give that 200 rupees off to the consumer. So the only person who can stop me doing this is brand. So if the brand cannot stop me doing it is, I completely agree with, agree with the Vishay, it will go further. It will go to newer heights, newer levels. The third point I want to highlight is, and I think it was getting discussed when we were discussing Omni Chan. I personally think, and I am uh, reacting to what Rashna said, I personally think it's Internet is too big a disruption as far as retail is concerned. It is not about morphing your business, a lot of businesses need to transform themselves. Uh, and I think whichever business, if a very large business has that challenge that it cannot transform itself, it has a channel conflict issue, uh, and I think Abhishek could be handling this on a day-to-day -day basis, but a smaller brand can actually go ahead and say, um, I don't want to use this word, hell with my retail side of the business, I'm completely going to go online. And you can see uh, there's something called Alibaba 100. There are close to 500 brands which have been made on Alibaba itself, and the biggest brand has a turnover of $600 million. 
right? So this will be this disruption will lead newer structures as far as brand creation is concerned. The challenge is that somebody who already has a structure, how does he handle that? So I guess uh, just starting a point. So you will have uh, this new new brand creation, which was becoming a huge challenge. I guess this opens a, a great opportunity platform for people to create brands. And in a nutshell, somewhere what Rachna was also saying, all said and done, it's not just about what the you or I want, it's the consumer, what he wants and the models are going to shape and deliver according to that. There is no choice and if discount is about, you know, selling uh, sample to sell in ample, that kind of mindset, that is, if the consumer base is going up, then why not? Because any which way the organized retail for the country is as good as uh, fairly small and uh, not that we are seeing 200 malls. start by 1.5 or 1.8 and go to 4.5 for that. But we don't need more malls here. There's enough of retail space which is lying empty and there's hardly a consumer out there. So <laughs> don't, don't expect it. <laughs> one last question. One last question. If any. Yes. Hi, this is Ashish here. What will the world look like for you one year after the years of performance? <laughs> yeah, without an approval, uh, online is so, doing so well. We, once the whole FDI comes in, we can just uh, become a service provider to online guys, you know, <laughs> because they are they they will generate the uh, demand and will service them those demands. So I will I will answer this in a bit philosophical business philosophy matter. You can't predict one year ahead. And those businesses who are predicting one year ahead will not do well. You need to predict the next month. So I think yeah, if more money comes in, more more, uh, more avenues, more platforms, more competition, more consumption, more discounts, more brands struggling to find their space on how to manage the brands from getting diluted, newer brands getting created. So I think we are we are scratching the surface. If you if you have read the Chinese online market story, it, it is humongous. It's humongous. You know, Alibaba the other day did as much sales in one day as uh, 9.5 billion dollars in a day. A yeah, single day, which is 11 level, they did a turnover of 10.6 billion dollars. 10.6 billion dollars. So, which is which is twice our e-commerce market uh, as, of, uh, as of today. So exciting times, right space. You guys were in the right uh, uh, discussion, I must say. <laughs> All right, I leave it here. Thank you so much. Thank you very much to uh, Mr. Abhishek Ganguly and the panelists.